one. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Fillion. And I'm Steve Piacenza, and we are here with Mod Podge and so excited to be doing Facebook Live. We have lots of projects to show you and we are going to be concentrating on and showing you our transfer image formula. We're going to be showing you the original formula and we're going to show you the new super cool clear formula. We've got lots of different projects. We've got 10 plus projects. And before we get started with our tutorial, which is this really cool wedding photo art that we're making with kind of a modern Warhol, Warhol look. look. yeah. That's what we're gonna be making. And we're also gonna be showing you how to make this cute fabric purse. But before we get started with the tutorials, I want to talk about the two different formulas and I'll explain what works with one and what doesn't yeah. work with the other because it can be a little it bit confusing. It gets a little confusing between the two formulas, but Kathy's a really good talker and a really good explainer. <laughs> Chatty Kathy. She's going to show you how it's all done. So our original formula of the image transfer, now this is not Mod Podge. So, you know, you think of Mod Podge like satin or something like this. So there is some confusion that people use Mod Podge. You don't want to use Mod Podge. You want to use Mod Podge photo transfer either original or clear. And these are gonna be in the eight ounce tall bottles like this, or each one comes carded like this with a paintbrush. And this two ounce bottle will do quite a few projects. Yeah, and it's a great starter kit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. that's such a good point. Like anyone who wants to try but doesn't wanna invest in the eight ounce, this is a great one. And all of these products you can get at plaidonline.com. Yes. And I think in the description there should be a link that will take you there and it will show you the different products and there should be some projects there and some more tips and tricks as well. So plaidonline.com is the place to go. Now, the first image transfer formula, this is the original, creates what we call the halo look. That's that white edge there and the white background. That's the original formula. And the new formula, which is the clear image transfer formula, does not create that halo. This is the same image and you can see all along that edge there, that's clear. And the background part there, that's clear. It has a slight pink look because our background is painted, that light pink. And that's that same technique that we're gonna show you how to do on the uh, wedding Warhol art. Yeah, so it's really whatever color your surface is, whether it be wood, white, or painted, the clear is going to wherever the image you put on top of it is going to come through, as you can see from here. See, that's the difference. If it's white and then you use the transfer, the color underneath will pop through. So this is really fun for home decor and almost think of it as like the old decals, you know? Yes. So it's, it's really fun. Now let's talk about the differences. Cool what works on what? The original formula works on wood, terracotta, tin, glass for decals, and our very, very favorite, and we made a lot of samples to show you of this, Fabric. Yes. So the original formula is fabric friendly and it's machine washable. The new formula, the clear formula, is not, it does not work on fabric. No. It will work on glass, but it's not washable on glass. So for decorative purposes. And we're going to go through all that and show you how these projects yeah. that we do with each formula. <laughs> so it's not so confusing. And the original, the, the new clear formula is also going to, um, work on any of your those, those same surfaces terracotta metal wood canvases and it's going to create that clear image look behind there so should we get to the tutorial let's do it let's show them the tutorial and show you how it's done because it's pretty easy but there's a lot of really important steps that you're going to have to follow through to make your project um, look really nice. I think success. Successful is a yeah. really good word. Now it's wedding season of course so a lot of people are giving really nice gifts and personal gifts and here is <laughs> Kathy and Eddie back on their important day. <laughs> so we just used their picture because they did a wonderful black and white picture of it and we decided to put it on top of this surface just to show you how it's done. Now very important you want to go to the copy the cop copy shop and make sure you print out whatever image you have, not your original photograph. You want to make sure it's a copy, a laser print copy, not an inkjet print copy because inkjets 
are water-based and they're wet. And our formula is water-based and wet. And wet and wet, what happens? Big old smear. It blurs. And so think, you have to make sure it's laser printed. And I think one thing to know, like a lot of people are confused. Like this is the question that we get probably every day of our lives. Yeah. Is what kind of paper for photo transfer? So we're probably saving you from typing asking <laughs> the question right now because it's the number one question. And we will uh, go over this several times. Yeah. So if you have a printer at home that's a laser printer, that will work. Yes. But if you have a printer at home that's inkjet, which means it has those little cartridges with the liquid in it, that is not going to be successful no with this formula. It will create that smear. Uh, my local coffee shop that's just right here in Burbank. Mine has it. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful copy. So we did photos, we did scrapbook papers, all sorts of Anything. things. Anything. But it's all copied. It's we all were, copied. No original photos, no original paper. All of the projects were made with the copies from our local coffee shop. And you can use colored copies or black and white. Now the black and white's great because like we said, with the white, wherever the white is, is what's going to come through. So let me just really quickly. And I think one other note is that hmm. it's thin paper. It's not fancy paper. Yeah, not fancy. And actually, um, with all the tests that we have done, the thin normal paper actually works the best. So you don't need that yeah. thick, heavy duty paper. For sure. Okay. So we got our surface right here and we painted it with the multi-surface folk art paint, the fire coral, beautiful color. I love this color. So we just covered the whole entire thing, painted it. And we are going to take our copy. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to add our clear formula right on top of the copy. You wanna make sure you have a nice coat. You wanna go over the edge, as you can see what I'm doing, because you have to make sure that the liquid formula, the clear transfer, covers your entire piece of paper. If it doesn't hit a spot, it's not going to transfer over onto the surface that you're using. So you can see this is kind of a clear formula. It's a little bit of a milky white. Yeah, and the original formula is going to be thicker. a lot thicker. Yeah, yeah, this is more, this is uh, thinner and clear. So there you go. You can see I covered the whole entire thing. Just like so. Let's just make that nice and even. And again, all of these products can be found at platonline.com. There we go. Now... Next tip, you're gonna take it off your wax paper and you wanna go in an area where it's white because that is going to be see-through. If you did it on an area where it's black and my fingers touched it and pulled that transfer, you might have a little bit of a hole there. So with my chubby little fingers here, I'm going to take my paper and then go directly on top of your piece of wood and your surface. You get a little bit of time to work with this stuff. And you're really only holding it by the edges. Like so, just like that. Okay, next important step. You wanna use a squeegee or a credit card works beautifully. You wanna work from the center and just lightly push that surface down. You wanna make sure that that paper hits your wood surface without any wrinkles or any bubbles. Because again, if you get bubbles in there, it's not gonna transfer over onto the piece of wood. And I like to go into this direction. And you, you don't wanna to press too hard because you don't wanna no. create creases. You don't have to over squeegee it. That's on there beautifully. I don't see any bubbles. No bubbles, no wrinkles. We are good. <laughs> now we're gonna set this aside for 24 hours. You want to let this dry for 24 hours because I like to call it, it's almost like a- um, Cure time? A cure time yeah. where the transfer in 24 hours is going to be pressing down onto that piece of wood and transferring over. So we're gonna set this aside. It's a long aside. 24 hours. It is a I, long 24 hours. I will <laughs> say, the other thing that people say all the time is, yeah. do I really have to wait 24 hours? Yes. yes. <laughs> you really have to wait the 24 hours. If you don't wait the 24 hours, it's not gonna work. Well, I can't guarantee you'll be successful yeah. if you don't wait, because that, that is a really important thing. Well, what we like to do too is do multiple projects. If you're gonna pull the stuff out and make it, you know, don't just make one, you can make a... a oh, you're gonna make well, a whole is, bunch of these Well, formats. it's, it's, it's a great way to do a number, a, a lot of yeah. gifts at the same time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so it's the movie magic here. Boom, boom, boom. We have one that has been drying for 24 hours, and here it is, and this is what it looks like. Almost looks like the original, but it is dry. Second step, guys, 
Important step, very important. We are using a damp sponge. I got some water here. I got my sponge. You wanna wring out your sponge, and all you do is you knead it damp. And yeah, not too wet. Not too wet because you don't wanna saturate this. And watch as you can see, you're gonna see. You're gonna see the image starting to pop through. And and add a little bit more just, water. You can just set the sponge on there if you've got a you know thick image. You just want to make sure you get it completely wet all the way around, and you're gonna see that that water is gonna start absorbing into that paper. And again, it's the same thing. You're gonna you want to hit all the edges, and you can see the image starting to come through. Now, wherever it's white, you want to make sure. That water hits it, and you're gonna keep doing that until it's completely, almost transparent. There we go, so you can kinda of see what's happening there. The more I'm gonna do it, the more it's gonna come through. It's gonna be completely transparent, that picture, but we can't, um, let's not waste too much time on that, because you only have 20 minutes, right, Kath? <laughs> and at this point, then, you just wanna let that sit for two minutes. So you just let it sit and let the water soak in. And what I wanna show you while that is soaking in is some different ideas. Now this letter K is done with a piece of scrapbook paper. And that is, we did not Mod Podge that on there. We color copied this just like we talked about earlier. And if you can see, some people say, why not just Mod Podge that right onto the K? This is unfinished wood and if you look closely, you can see the grain of the wood coming through there. We did not paint this one. So if you were to have just Mod Podge the paper on there, you wouldn't get that grain coming through. So that's one of the differences with the clear transfer versus just the Mod Podge. You would just, if you had the paper on there, you would just have that thick paper look and not get that really cool grain look coming through. Yeah, that's the beauty of the clear. You can oh, yeah. you see, and as you can see here, you guys, you take a look. You can see that image even coming through more. We're gonna set this aside and just let that water absorb into that. But we have more projects with the clear right behind me here. This one is one of my favorites here, is this piece of tin. Now, it's a little bucket here, but what I've done is, I did on purpose, I did a little bit of this um, roughening up. These are labels, so it gives it that, that kind of aged down look. And this works and on just, tin beautifully. You can just rub it extra hard. If yes. you want to create those holes, like an old antique piece, just rub it there. I mean, we wouldn't encourage that for your photo projects like this, but it's really cool technique for something distressed. And home decor. We did this jewelry box here. I think, Kathy, you're keeping this, aren't you? <laughs> it's so cute. So this is a, just an example to show you how it works on furniture as well. And there's a few things to point out, and we're gonna go into more detail about reversing images a little bit later. But if you have uh, an image that has words on it, that will need to be reversed on the copier. But like I said, we're gonna discuss that in detail in a little bit. Uh, one thing I do want to show you is this was blue to begin with. So we have our black and white images here. And that's with the clear transfer. So you get that blue popping through. And this is clear transfer as well, but that is uh, full color. So you'll just get little pops of the blue coming through. Or we just did a little extra distressing on it. And a perfect example of the tin again. Here's the piece of paper. And as you can see, the white completely around it. But with the clear transfer, we did it on a piece of tin and you've got that clear behind it. This is a great decorative wall hanging. And this is an example of sort of that modern look again. So you can take any color cop or any color photo and you can just set it onto the copier machine and choose black and white. So even though it's a color copy, it's black and white. So you wanna look for um, images that have high contrast, like the light dress and the dark hair. That's a really good example of high contrast. Again, this started out as a color picture. You just put it on the copier and select black and white instead of color. Such a cool modern look. Love this I mean, one. you can do, you know, very soft and vintage-y, mm -hmm. and with the same formula, you can do this modern look. Yeah, and here's a color copy using the clear formula. Again, people are saying, well, why not just cut the piece of paper out and slap it onto your surface or a piece of canvas? And the difference is, is I'm hoping this reads, like on a piece of canvas, 
you can see the canvas. It almost melds through mm -hmm. right down into the piece of canvas where you get that canvas look. If it was the paper on top of it and it was just Mod Podge, it would just be a piece of paper. And I think a great example of that is these rocks that they almost look, fo they almost look like fossils that it melds right into the rock. You can see that right there. Yeah, right into the cracks. Right into the cracks and the grooves, and it gives it that almost false fossilified. Is that a word? I don't know. If that's I don't a know. Word. If it's not, I just made one up. But that's, oh, he's famous for making yeah, words. <laughs> that's the beauty of this stuff. So that um, the feathers started out as a piece of decorative um, scrapbook paper that's designed to go in a frame, but we color copied it and cut out the feathers and then applied them to the rock with the clear transfer. And we're going to work with the feathers with the original formula too. They were super fun, but it's really endless. I mean, you can you can use oh, yeah. these on rocks, wood, and it it works on so many different surfaces and even glass. Yeah, and it's fun just to mess around with the stuff and kind of. You know, if you have a, a, for me, furniture is great. Yeah, oh yeah. I love using furniture. If you have an old piece of furniture, this stuff is amazing on it for uh, home decorations and, um, you know, just kind of anything around the around Well, the I room. think wall art, like a good example is um, just using your vacation photos or your family photos. Yes, vacation photos. Here's another one with the little slats in between. We wanted, we just cut the pieces of paper to fit. It was a poster um, of, it was... No, this one was the the. Yeah, it was um, a poster. It was a poster yeah. that we did, but you I can also actually take that photo. I've you never can, been. Yeah, there. well, you can do <laughs> vacation photos, which is great, and bring them to the copier and blow mm -hmm. them up or shrink them down. That's the other thing. Make sure it's laser paper, of course, and we just cut them to size and then put them on this um, this wall palette. hanging. I love that. So people would use regular printer paper, regular but it must printer. be printed on a laser printer. Correct. Yep. Regular, thin paper, yep. not the really thick stuff, not and computer. laser, laser, laser. Inkjet will not work because inkjet is wet, the formula is water-based wet, and the two together will smear. So it will not work. You have to do a uh, laser. And I think what's important to note about the type of paper is that the technique that we're doing if you notice this is wet now and the next thing Steve is going to do is he's going to gently rub away that paper. So if you had real thick paper, this process would take many, many more times. So the thinner the paper, actually this step will go a lot faster. I'm going to wet this a little bit over here. Okay, should we start on this? Should we do the, um, yeah, okay. So you ready to rub it up? It's not, this one has to sit for 24 hours. That one sat for 24 hours? Oh, that one did sit for 24 <laughs> hours. This is the one. Oh, jeez. I, I got too many step outs. I know, it's confusing. Okay, here we go. So this is really important, guys. What we're gonna do is, this is a five layer process here. I'm wetting it and I'm rubbing and I'm doing circular motions. Now, the deal is with this is you're taking off layers on top of layers. So you wanna be gentle with this. And as you can see, the paper is coming off and that image is coming through. But what's most important is not to over rub it and certainly not to rub it down to the point where you're going to rub off your image. So you're gonna rub it off. And then as you can see, this paper's coming off and you're gonna get, gonna get to a point where you're gonna know to stop. So here it comes. Here's the image. A and if bit. you rub too hard, you're going to burn a hole in your image and That's you're not right. going to be happy. So this step here, you do about four or five times. So each layer coming off, it's just the thin layer you're taking off and then you're going to let it dry and repeat. <laughs> okay. Now just brush that off. You can see it. That's the first layer. And I'm going to set this aside and you're going to want to let that dry. The white's going to come back out of it. But I think you're going to let it want to let it dry. It's probably about, I don't know, I would say 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 you'll it's know. A, you'll know it once it starts getting foggy again. And I want to show Steve this one too yeah. before you move on to that next step. This is what happens if you rub too hard. So we made this sample board here. You can see that all that, excuse me, that paper's still there. But look, we burned holes right in there. So you don't want to rub too hard. Okay, so here's one, guys. This is about four layers done. So this is my next step out. It's about four layers done. So I'm gonna do almost the final layer. I got my sponge, my damp sponge. I'm gonna go on top of it again. 
and just go into circular motions. And there's Kathy. Look at <laughs> Kathy, we are revealing you. <laughs> the 2004 me. The 2004 <laughs> Kathy. And as you can see on layer five, there we have it. Oh, look how pretty. There you have the final layer right there. And that is the fifth rubbing layer. So remember, it's five different layers. Take your time with this and go gently and easy. And there's your transfer. We like to call it baby steps because, you know, photo transfer can be tricky. I mean, let's yes. be honest. It's something that does take some practice. Um, but what we find is most of the people that are having trouble with it, it's because they're trying to remove that paper all at once. And pressing a little bit too hard. It's very gentle. It's almost let the sponge and the water work together and that those layers will come off. Do not press too hard because you're going go yeah. to you're gonna go from layer one down to layer five and that's and, no bueno. And then you're going to see your canvas. That's right. <laughs> you're not going to have an image left. Yeah. <laughs> so baby steps there. Now this same technique is as far as applying the formula to the paper is the same thing that I want to show you with the original formula and we did a lot of fabric samples because for us personally we love the original formula for fabric it's machine yeah. washable it's, the best. it's so cool for customizing it's the best. this it's it's really endless the, yeah. the clear is amazing for these photo projects yeah the original is amazing. But it's fabric, fabric and it can be washed and you can, again, you know what it's great for? Again, photos, family photos yeah. on anything. So cute. So this is a little wristlet purse that we made. And we found this adorable No Drama Llama scrapbook paper. And we did <laughs> not use the scrapbook paper. We took it and we copied it at the copy shop. So we started with a copy of it. And we applied it to our bag the exact same way Steve just showed you. So we put the formula. I want to show you, though, this formula is a little bit thicker. It's going to look like white and thick, okay? So it's going to go on thicker than the, than the clear formula. So we applied that, and we placed it down onto our surface, and we waited 24 hours. It's like, it's so long because you're like, oh. Can I do it yet? Can I do it yet? Can, no. No. So same technique. I'm going to, just for sake of time, I'm not going to wait the two or three minutes to let that soak through because we don't need to sit around and wait for that. But as you can see, you can start to see it coming through. And then you'll do that same technique where you're going to rub it. I've already got a little bit of the paper coming up. Yeah, it's the same technique as the clear. Same thing. You can start the two to see. formulas work the exact same way. So it's going to, um, there comes some there of the paper is. there. So you would do this, and again, it's going to be baby steps. I would do the whole thing, and then I would let it dry and do that again until your image is revealed. And then to finish off a project like this, we just glued some trim on there. We added this fun tassel. And, you know, this is so easy to make if you want to do let's say bridesmaids gifts or birthday gifts or even, I mean, my girls would even love this it's a fun way to customize something you could even do a monogram and we have this cute tote look how adorable that is now this one you could do as a gift but I did an F because I'm planning on keeping it for myself <laughs> and look how fun that is so easy and that was just a piece of scrapbook paper yeah. same deal but we copied it. We didn't use the actual scrapbook paper. Now, one thing to note about this is that we did have to do that F in reverse. And I want to show you what that means. We have a t-shirt here. Mr. Gary Bush. Yeah, this is my dad. This is Kathy's dad. He was a young fella. And, um, you know, it's so cute. You can, if you've got family reunions or birthdays or just any fun thing that you want to do. Like we did Team Grandpa. So we started out with an image like this. So we have our vintage photo of grandpa and then I wrote team grandpa just in a word document. I took this and I shrunk it down and copied it at my local coffee shop and I hit one button, just the reverse button. And you wanna do that or else when you do this, it will be reversed on there if you don't do that. So whenever you have text, it has to be reversed before you do this process. I made that mistake a couple times. <laughs> I know. Well, even cutting out the F, I was like, which way is backwards? No. I was so confused. Was like, ah. <laughs> Instagram pictures are really popular too, Kat. Oh, huge. And this 
this is a new version of the old project. Yeah. It was like our number one blog project for Check two years. this out. Kathy's beautiful daughters and her okay husband, I suppose. <laughs> um, but these are Instagram pictures on top of the pillowcase, the fabric pillowcase here. And again, this was at the um, um, copy shop. Got all our pictures together. We have nine of them. Shrunk them down to all match the exact same size. And I uh, used the formula and put them right on top of here. And it's just a fun pillow to have on your sofa. Great family. And a um, great gift. I great mean, gift. And, yeah. of course, when it gets all dirty, you take, you know, the thing out, throw it in the washer. Because it is machine washable. It's machine washable. And there you go. And it look brand new again. So yeah. many people are decorating uh, baby onesies and t-shirts. And this is just an example of how you can take a piece of scrapbook paper. We just love that unicorn image. We copied this and we transferred it right onto this onesie. And here we just added with our gem glue some fun gems to that unicorn. One of the things that we were interested in seeing about was if it would work on leather, because mm. we found these cool leather arrows, and we used that same feather image, and it transferred onto the leather beautifully. This is the original formula, so it works on fabric and it works on leather like that. Very cool. So cool. It's endless what you can do, really. <laughs> yeah, and another fun home decor item are these candles here. These are faux candles that we just did it right on top of this. This is great for weddings. You could oh, yeah. do a wedding picture and maybe the date or something. These are great gifts, even for the holidays. So you they know, work I on that. It's so cute. You could do, I mean, a whole mantle could, for Yeah, you could yeah. do. Well, our favorite, Halloween. Yeah. So, you know, all Halloween papers or Christmas papers. Yeah. Or even letters that just spell out. You have a bunch of candles mm -hmm. lined up. I mean, it's endless. So simple. You guys know. You guys are all crafty over there. <laughs> Super creative. Yeah. So. Well, okay. does anyone have any questions? We would yes. love to answer any questions. Any questions, Raphael? Uh, someone just asked if you had put uh, Mod Podge on the canvas or the surfaces before you lay down the paper. It's always to work in reverse. Definitely put it down on well, the pictured paper first. She asked first. me Mod Podge though. Mod yeah. Podge or photo transfer. So yeah, that's the other thing we want to clarify. You want to use the... Photo transfer. Photo transfer. Yeah, well I assume that's what it is since we're working with it. No? No, I think, so. were they asking... Mod Podge itself? Well, they just wrote Mod Podge, they might have mm. Right. So, no, you don't put anything on the surface. So, um, do we have a blank surface still? I don't think we no, do. No, we don't. So, let's say it was this surface here. The only thing that was on this surface first was the pastel pink paint. So, all of the photo transfer medium, not regular Mod Podge, photo transfer Mod Podge, goes onto the paper, the printed side of the paper, and that paper goes down. Right. Is that clear? That's, that makes sense. It's so confusing. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> I don't want anyone to get yeah, confused. Yeah, so you would apply it on your image. Correct. So we're going to apply it. Let's just use this. You apply the photo transfer directly on this, and then it goes down like that. Yeah. And With the photo transfer. And again, we're not using our regular formulas. We're not using our Mod Podge formulas. These are the photo transfers, the original and the clear. Any other questions? We good? Okay. So why don't we recap? Okay. So let's well, do a quick recap of everything. So, and first what I want to say too is all of these products can be found at platonline.com. Yes, and important. there should be a link... Uh, in our description there that will take you there and there'll be project inspiration and all sorts of tips and tricks there as well Yeah, okay, so original versus clear. What is it yeah. Kath? The right here. The original formula works on wood, terracotta, tin, glass for decals, canvases We discovered leather. Leather. And my very favorite is for fabric. Right, and it gives this this white halo around it, so whatever the image is, whatever, it's going to be exactly what you put down. You're going to get that white background and the white around the edge. So now, the difference, the clear? Works on wood, terracotta, tin, canvas, not fabric. It does work on glass, but not washable. And so the decorative. difference is? No halo. You get that clear background. You get a clear around the edge there. Yeah. Very beautiful for decals. And that's the difference between the two formulas because we know it gets confusing. So with the clear formula, you can see on this letter here, you get a little bit of the wood grain popping through. 
okay? If we were to have used the original formula, we would not have that wood grain popping through. Right, and this is um, not washable. Cannot hit water, but the original formula can be on fabric and it can be washed. Yes, exactly. Yes, I think we did it. Did we do it? So I let's recap so. paper. Paper, okay. <laughs> paper. No inkjet. No inkjet. They will Laser. Yes. yes. So go to your local coffee shop and remember if you're doing an image that has words, make sure you reverse that image. Make sure those words are reversed. Uh, you will apply it to the actual image the front side, and it will go down right onto your surface. Yep, and one more important thing, I'm gonna say one more time, <laughs> with using the clear, and when you do put it down on your surface, it's layers, it's layers, layers, layers. You're gonna do five different layers. So this one has dried a little bit, that was layer one. This one is layer two now. And you can see even more is coming off of that. You wanna take your time with these projects, and just make sure you're doing layer after layer. And this paper, these layers will keep coming off. So this is layer two happening. I'm going to stop and not get aggressive, put it aside Don't and let this dry for another seven minutes and then go to layer three. And again, by layer five, there's your end result for the clear transfer. Okay. And I think another good tip is I don't like to use too much water. No, I, damp cloth, a damp a, um, sponge. Yeah, it works the yeah, best. Just, and you can also rub with your fingers, mm -hmm. but I find with the finger, you end up going a little, yeah. a little bit too hard. Just use your 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 old sponge here. It's a, it's it's the best. It works the best, I think. So if you have right. any more questions, please leave them in the comments, and we or someone from Plaid will be sure to answer all of your questions. We know that the two different formulas can be a little bit confusing and yeah. what kind of paper, and we wanna make sure that you are successful with this product because it is such a fun thing and you can make so many different projects and gifts, yeah. I think the gifts are And amazing. send us your projects, we'd love to see them. And make sure you are please following Plaid at YouTube, Facebook, anywhere, oh, Instagram. Instagram, of <laughs> There's so many now. Yeah. And go to platonline.com to learn more about these products and if you want to purchase them. Wow, you should be a spokesperson. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks, we'll see you next time. Talk to you soon.